In this presentation, we're going to complete our credit card reconciliation after having entered the bank feed information into our accounting system. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Triple G Company dashboard. We're going to start off by opening our financial statements. Let's go on down to the accounting drop down and go down to the balance sheet. Once that opens up, we're going to be duplicating it by going to the tab up top and right clicking on it and then duplicating that tab. Let's go back over to the balance sheet and now we're going to be opening up the let's go to our other reports going to the report drop down and we're going to be looking at the reconciliation report. We don't really need the income statement. In other words, we kind of skipped that one. We're going to go back down and we're going to go down to the accounting. We want the bank reconciliation report here. Once that opens up, we're going to be right clicking on that uh, tab up top once again and duplicating it. Then we're going to go to the balance sheet. Within the balance sheet, we're going to be changing the dates, bringing that up to the date we're currently working in. And that, of course, will be April. April is the date we want. That's the one we're in. That's the one we're working on. So we're going to update to the month of April. Then we're going to go to the bank reconciliation. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit to that one, two, five, so we can see a little bit better. We're going to go to the account or the bank account, which is now the uh, credit card. We want the credit card account. We're working once again in the month of April. So we're going to bring that on up to the month of April. All right, I went too far. Not June, not May, April. That's the one. Then we're going to update that tab. Now, you'll remember that last time we reconciled everything that we had on the bank feeds, but the bank feeds only included the data like kind of like the activity here on the statement but doesn't include the beginning balance which is a common problem when you first start entering data whether it be a bank account or a credit card account so now we have to enter like the beginning balance uh in the system so that we can tie out to the ending balance and once we do that for like the first time then we're okay then everything's going to go smoothly from that point forward well we won't have to do it again but this time we're going to have to add that one thousand dollars now typically if you're adding the one thousand dollars we're going to assume this happened at some point before we started, you know, entering these transactions into this accounting system. So that means we're going, we're going to increase the liability of the credit card. The other side should go somewhere to an equity account like retained earnings or to, uh, to, you know, other, some other kind of equity account. In other words, it shouldn't be going to the current year statement of income statement because it would have rolled over into the equity. So if you're, I would double check that if you can start your books by entering it in the prior year. Like if you can start your books in January and enter it in the prior, then you kind of double check yourself. But you should be okay uh, to put it to an equity section. So we're going to make sure that just to do that, we'll put it into equity on the other side. So I'm going to go back down here. We're going to be entering a transaction. You'll note if I go to the, uh, hold on a second. All right, I'm back, kind of sketched out there. So I'm going to the first tab. If I go to the first tab over here, you'll note if we go to the accounting dropdown and then we go to the uh, bank information, the bank account information, you'll recall that we reconciled everything for the credit card. So we finished the reconciliation process. There's nothing down here in the little blue box. To get back in there, you can go to the account dropdown. You're going to have to get back in there. And we can go to this one, which is account transactions. And that'll take us to that kind of like that three tab type of area where we had the bank reconciliation. So instead of taking us to the first tab, bank reconciliation, it takes us to the third tab, the account transactions. You'll note here on the reconciliation side of things, everything uh, has been reconciled, but we're missing something. So we're going to say we have to add a transaction. If we go to the bank statement information, the reason we're missing something is because it, this is only the transactions that doesn't have the beginning balance. So we're going to have to add the beginning balance. So to do that, I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this tab as well. I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to the prior tab and we need to enter a transaction. So I'm going to go up top to say plus and I'm going to say it's a spend money transaction. Now this is kind of funny, the spend money transaction because uh, it's going to be spending. It's really a credit card transaction, but we can use that same form to, to go to the credit card statement. That's why it's set up as a bank account. So the spend money transaction, we're going to say it's coming out of the credit card account now and then we're going to say next which isn't really spending money it's racking up you know liability but that's how it works it works and it works well so we're going to say that this is the beginning balance and we don't really know who it's going to so this is like miscellaneous because this is stuff that happened before our accounting system and then i'm going to put it in as of the end of april so i'm going to say uh is that that's april 1st and then the description i'm just going to put this as the beginning balance and it was 1000 
And then we want to make sure it's going to an equity account, not affecting the income statement, because this isn't something that happened in the current time period. It happened sometime in the past and therefore should have rolled into, uh, you know, the equity section, uh, it, you know, after that cutoff date. So I'm going to put it down into equity. So we're going to go down here. And, and note, if you are starting in the middle of the year, you got to you got to kind of be careful with this because these are these would be transactions that would have happened possibly in uh, March. So, again, you'd want to start like at the beginning of the year if you can. Otherwise, you should be entering the detail into the, the income statement in the prior month. Right. But we're again, if we're imagining this is in a prior accounting system, then it would it would be already rolled over and whatnot. So we're going to go here. I'm going to say put it directly into the retained earnings. So it's going to roll into. Uh, the retained earnings and equity. So what's this going to do when we record it? Increase the credit card liability account. The other side, increasing the equity or affecting the equity, which is going to be the retained earnings account. So it will actually be de decreasing it. But in any case, here we go. We're going to say save. And there we have that. Does it give me any red things? Nope. Everything's good. So we're going to go back to the balance sheet then. Let's update the balance sheet and see what happens with it. Going on down to the credit card, we'll see the credit card now has that 1250 in it. That then matches the, the statement right now. So now we're at the uh, 1250 So that's what we would say is kind of like due at this point in time. Then if we made a payment on the credit card, we can record basically that payment right now. Or we obviously we might not see it until it clears the bank account. Uh, you know, we might wait till it clears the bank account in the bank feeds. And then record the payment, which will take the, the balance down to the balance on the sheet on the on the statement minus the amount that we paid uh, is what should be remaining there. So there is that side of things. The other side went into the equity. So it's in retained earnings. So this retained earnings has only that now. Now, this current year earnings will roll into retained earnings after the end of the period. So if I was to run this balance sheet report as of. Uh, January of next year this number will roll into this number and then and it'll net out against each other so you'll see this kind of a decrease in retained earnings and this would be the increase in, and these two would you know net out each other after it rolls forward after the end of the year okay so then we're gonna go back uh, to the bank reconciliation what's gonna happen here well we haven't we need to now add this to our reconciliation report so if I update this point at this point in time we see that the balance now ties out to what's on the balance sheet. That's what's always going to be the case with the bank reconciliation. So it's at the 1,250, but the ending balance is still at the 250, right? And that's not right. It should be the 1,250 according to our statement. And that means we have to do add this to our reconciliation items and then we'll be okay. So how do we do that? We're going to go back to the second tab. I think we're on now. Let's go back to the second tab where we have our bank reconciliation information. So there is not showing up where we usually work with this information. It's not in the reconciliation item because this is items we typically get from the bank. So it, it's not going to pop up here. It's not going to pop up on the bank statement side of things because we didn't upload this from the bank statement because this is happening before the date for which we had the uploads. It's going to show up on the accounts transaction. So this is now happening on the account side, something we entered on our side that we didn't get from the bank because it would happen before the time period that the bank transactions were starting. Therefore, we're gonna have to kind of force this reconciliation item to work. And we'll only typically have to do that when we do the beginning balance. To do that, you're gonna to go to the little uh, question mark up top and you have to enable the, the reconciliation. Now, ours is already enabled because we did so on the bank statement. So just make sure that this should say disable mark as reconciled because it is currently enabled and therefore you know you to toggle back it would go to the disabled so that's it so then we're going to say that'll show up this little icon will then show up which will mark as reconciled or uh, unmarked and then we're going to go down and we're just going to check that off and we're going to say i would like you to mark that as reconciled mark it as reconciled please and it'll give you a little warning saying we don't like recommend that usually and we're going to go i know but we know what we're doing here this is the time this is the exception to the rule this is why it's there and then we're going to go back down and now it's going to be reconciled and notice it says reconciled by the by the user. So this is something that uh, we entered into the system as a reconciling item. If we then go back to the bank reconciliation then and update this, this one should then disappear and we should be good to go. So I'm going to update this. 
and then now it, it matches out so we got this information directly from the bank and it matches out now because that's our ending balance here for the for the credit card so that matches out here so we're we're good i could go ahead and publish that if we want to publish it note and that and you probably should just to say hey look i've reconciled as of this point in time also note these other tabs up top we didn't look at these uh when we did the bank accounts if you go to uh, the statement information, you're going to have uh, the detail with regards to the credit card statement information. And if you go to the statement exceptions, this is where they're, they're listing out for you those ones. And it says this is another area where it's going to say, hey, look, this was entered by the user manually. So it's showing you those items that's saying this didn't come from the bank statement. This is something that you input put it manually. And you can kind of kind of see the difference between uh, those two items. And again, this you, the ones that we input manually that don't match up to the bank should really only be that beginning balanced kind of way the way we have the system currently set up so that's going to be it for now let's get out of here